Welcome to our next video. This time we'll, talk and we'll be talking about put call parity. There is a certain interaction between the price of a call and the price of a put between long call and long put. And this formula gives us this interaction. Now there are two different actions, two different actions that need to be taken, fiduciary call and protective put. Fiduciary call means that we buy a call and that we buy a bond. First, buying a call. What does that mean? A call is the right to buy a certain underlying, to buy a certain stock, for example. So we pay C sub zero. Sub zero because we stand right now at period zero and we have to invest this amount of money. I indicated the value the line indicating the value of a long call. Long call because we buy the call. We buy the right to buy an underlying at a price agreed upon at the outset. Here. So if the value, if the stock price at expiration is inferior to X, which means if we are here, the value of of the call is equal to zero because we don't exercise it. We do not exercise this call, this right to buy an underlying, if the stock price is inferior to exercise price. If it is superior, if it's strictly superior to the exercise price, it's the other way around. We will exercise the call because we get a gain. A gain equal to S sub T minus X minus the exercise price. So this is value now at period zero and this is the value tomorrow at the period capital T. This is what happens with buying a call. What happens with buying a bond? We buy a bond and we want to have the value X. So the face value of the bond is going to be X or its face value of a bond is equal to X because we need this amount of money tomorrow at period capital T. So that's how we construct this bond. It's a bond, it's not, it, it, we don't, it's important to know that the value, that the face value has to be the exercise price of the underlying. That's very important. The face value of the bond is equal to the exercise price of the underlying because we need this amount of money tomorrow at period capital T. So buying a bond is equal to this amount of money, x face value, divided by the interest rate, 1 plus the interest rate to the power of t. So now tomorrow it's capital X, but today it is this amount of money, leading to a total value right now of this and a total value in period capital T of X in the case of S sub T inferior to X. And if it's the other way around, if the stock price at expiration is superior, strictly superior to the exercise price, we get S sub T. That's it with fiduciary call. But put call parity does not depend only on fiduciary call, it also depends on protective put. There's the second action, protective put. What does protective put mean? We buy a put, we have to pay P sub zero. Buying a put means we buy the right to sell the underlying. We buy the right, that's why we have to pay P sub zero to sell the underlying. I indicated the value of this, of this long put, because buying a put means long put. This is the value line. This is the line indicating the value of the long put. So now, if the stock price is inferior to X, the value, stock price, 
inferior to x, which means we are here, we are somewhere on the left side. The value tomorrow, the value at period t, capital T, is going to be exercise price minus this stock price at expiration. Whereas if it is strictly superior, if the stock price at expiration is strictly superior to x, then there is no value at all. There is no value at all because we will not exercise this, this option. Um, that was the, the action of buying a put. This was the action of long put. Now, we also buy the underlying asset. The underlying asset, which means the stock, is traded at a price of S sub zero. So we have to invest S sub zero. In next period, tomorrow, at period capital T, the value of the stock is of course S sub T. There is no indication, there is no um, dependence on the option. So it is in either case, it is S sub T giving us a total today, the current value today with protective put is going to be P sub zero, P sub zero plus S sub zero and the value, the value at expiration of this protective put is going to be X in this case or S sub T in the other, in the case of stock price being strictly superior to the, um, the exercise price. So now, and that's very, very important for you to understand. Look at this. Look at this. Here we have the values X or S sub T with fiduciary call. With protective put, we have the same. Wow, we have the same values of X in the case, in this case, or S sub T in this case. So, and that's the very idea of put call parity. If the, if the values tomorrow in period capital T are going to be the same in either case, right? In this case, if the stock price is inferior to exercise price, we have the value X in either case. We have the value X in, in protective, with protective put and with fiduciary call. And we have the same here in this case. So if the values in period capital T are going to be the same, so they have to be the same to today. Which means that the value of fiduciary call, this one, this value has to be the same is this value. So those values have to be the same too. If the values tomorrow are the same, so they have to be the same today. Which means that this formula, put call parity, is correct. Because we look at the future. First we look at the future and then we deduce that the values also have to be the same right now and that's important because as I said at the beginning we have a, a, um, a certain implication or we, we look at the value of a put and of a call at the same time buying a call and buying a put so C sub zero and P sub zero play an important role in this formula of put call parity. Thank you for watching.